What types of things are you guys seeing in here? Damselflies. So we've got some damselflies. We've got quite a few damselflies up here. Depending on the different species we see or how many of them we can decide if they're rare or common species, then do some simple math to come up with a figure to tell if, it's, if our river quality is high, if it's excellent, or maybe if it's on the poor end. Northeast Michigan is extremely rich in Great Lakes and natural resources, and uh, through this network, uh, we have the opportunity to foster relationships between school and community partners with the purpose of supporting teachers and engaging students in caring about these uh, important resources for our communities. class we made an ROV. It's a, a robot that goes underwater for research and we're doing it to see if the rusty crayfish's um, population is going up or low. If you can get students actively engaged in the classroom, you can increase content retention by 75 percent. So this is, you know, the way that I get my students involved with and in, active in the classroom is we do research projects like this and then we go back in the classroom and we pull out the textbook and the textbook is asking us to do that. They've got an immediate connection to the real world and they're automatically drawn in because they know it has a purpose and it's useful. So we're basically going to be taking the lengths and the weights of the zebra mussels that you've collected here on this rack. We were an early partner with the Northeast Michigan Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative and uh, it ties in really well or unites well with our Connecting People with Nature initiative. There's no way I'd be able to do this project on my own without my community partners, without Michigan Sea Grant, without the Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative, without NOAA, the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, or the Alpena Fisheries Research Station. None of this would happen without them. I'm not the research expert, they are and so they allow us to use them to build our research models so that way it's usable to the, the research community. So today we're going to test dissolved oxygen. Can someone tell me why we're going to test for dissolved oxygen? Many teachers are afraid to step out and get involved with place-based education because they're going into an area that they're not familiar with, that it's not their area of expertise. And our GLSI hub is able to bring those resources to them so that teachers don't have to be an expert. They just have to be willing to take their kids out into the field. You guys are going to help me with a very important project. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to explore Thompson's Harbor State Park and we are going to look to observe and document the biodiversity that this park is, is so well known for. We basically wrote about what we see and everybody did it on a different species and all of the, all the species that everyone wrote about were endangered. This big huge patch of all this tall Phragmites. One of the things that we do is monitor the invasive species occurrences up and down the shoreline and so in partnering with these students to help us take all these measurements out in their communities, it helps them invest and care about what is going on in their community while getting us the valuable data that we can then use to help clean up the beaches and get rid of invasive species along the shoreline. We got some pretty shocking results from some of the, like, the litter pickup we did and stuff. We found a lot of cigarettes and a lot of trash and um, we wanted to help our beaches get cleaner. So my teacher and me and four others, we went and we decided to go to a city council meeting and present about what we did and ways to help. And then they actually listened. We're a rural area and have limited opportunities for many of our students. And place-based education has opened the door and has encouraged many students to stay in school and to pursue yes. careers in environmental yeah. education and in Great Lakes stewardships. We are here today to map the Joseph Fay, the shipwreck Joseph Fay. Who knows uh, what we have to do first? Measure from the baseline to here, then measure from the baseline to here so that you can draw. My class is called Shipwreck Alley. We try to cover all aspects of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, from what causes shipwrecks to how they study them archaeologically. And then we even go beyond that to look at the ecology of the lakes and things that are changing and affecting the lakes. It feels great knowing that I get to work with professionals who do this for a living and they go to work every day saying I love my job and that's what I want to do when I'm older. Place-based education offers a great opportunity to cross-connect uh, students across multiple grade levels. Uh, if you think in Northeast Michigan about the experience of one student in Alpena schools, uh, as an elementary student, those students are building underwater robots to explore their aquatic environments. 
Um, they're taking on uh, research projects around an important issue of invasive species. That same student moves on to the junior high uh, where they're out uh, conducting a beach cleanup, taking water quality samples of the beach. And by high school, those same students are out mapping shipwrecks with the National Marine Sanctuary, contributing to conservation habitat restoration projects with Fish and Wildlife Service and the Department of Natural Resources. If I were a student in Alpena schools, I'd be pretty excited about uh, my life from kindergarten to high school.